The moment you clicked on this video and saw that thumbnail, your computer could have been infected. Today we're diving into the sneaky world of memory cache poisoning, a technique that lets attackers hide malicious code in something as innocent as an image and sneak it onto your system without you even clicking anything. Stick around to learn how it works, how to pull it off with a simple PowerShell script, and most importantly, how to protect yourself. Imagine you are just on Twitter scrolling through your feed and you get past a certain image and it stages malware on your system just by looking at it. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? And it's certainly not possible, right? Well, actually it is and I'm gonna show you how it's done. So what is the memory cache and why does it exist? Your browser's memory cache stores images, scripts, and pages locally so websites load faster on repeat visits. I'll show you it in action using my website. On the right, we have a Google cache directory where I already deleted all the stored files. Notice when I refresh the page, all the images break. I'll refresh the page again and they're all back. And notice that the web cache folder populated with files as well. These are the assets from my website, from the wallpaper in the back to the individual icons on the desktop. Notice when we take one of those files and change the extension to .png, you can actually see which one it is. It's like a shortcut. Chrome saves a copy of each picture in a local folder instead of downloading it again. Great for speed, but also a tempting place for attackers to hide malicious data. So we know we can get an image on their system, but how do you hide malicious code in an image? That's where steganography comes in. Steganography is the art of hiding data in plain sight, like slipping a secret message into a picture without anyone noticing. Unlike encryption, which scrambles data to make it unreadable, steganography makes the data invisible to the naked eye. For example, you could embed a secret command in a PNG image, and it still looks like a regular photo of a sunset. Let's get to the fun part, the payload. If you go in my payload library, I got a PowerShell function called embed encrypted string in PNG that lets you hide a string inside a PNG. Here's how it works. You give it an image, a string to hide, an optional passphrase for encryption, and a custom comment block to mark where the string is. The string gets tucked in a special part of the PNG, which is meant for metadata like comments. In our case, we're wrapping the string with a delimiter to make it easier to find later. This creates a new PNG that looks identical to the original one, but has our secret command hidden inside, wrapped between comment blocks. If we open the image with a text editor like Notepad, you can actually go down to the bottom of the file and see your secret text. Now this image is ready to be uploaded to a website, tweeted out, or hosted on GitHub. When someone views it in Chrome, it gets stored in their browser cache, sitting quietly in that folder waiting to be exploited. For this demonstration, we are using one of the more basic steganography tricks. But keep in mind, I have scripts in my payload library to both hide data in the pixels of an image, as well as one to hide a whole zip file in the PNG as well. I even have an online tool to hide data in the pixels of an image, so it couldn't be easier to implement. Now, we need a way to extract that hidden string. Again, in my payload library, I have a function for just that called extract string from PNG. So we will run it against the image we just used and notice we pulled out the secret string. Now, what if instead of a normal, simple string, we instead passed in a base64 encoded command? If we open this membership image and scroll to the bottom, we can see we do indeed have a base64 command in between two comment blocks annotated as base64. What if instead of using that long function, we just made a short, efficient one-liner to do the same thing and then pass it into invoke expression to execute it? You'll notice it decoded the string, which was the start calc command, and then executed. Also, just keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a simple command. It could be an entire script. As a matter of fact, it could even be an entire executable that was encoded in base64. If you are familiar with my website, you will recognize this image as one of the icons on my desktop. Which means, 
when you visit my website, this image will end up in your cache folder we went over earlier. You see where we're going with this, right? So if we modify this one-liner to iterate through the Google cache directory instead, we will once again also have a successful execution. Here's where things get really devious. We can actually modify that command even further to make it work in the Explorer address bar. The thing is, the address bar only actually shows the last 157 characters. Imagine you're on a phishing page, like the one that I've made up here, that is telling you to navigate to a directory you already know exists and is safe. But just by looking at that image, it already ends up in your cache. It has a button to copy that path and you press it and paste it into your address bar. It pastes the full command you see here, but all you see is the characters that I want you to. Again, only the last 157 of them, which looks like a harmless file path. However, when you hit enter behind the scenes, it runs conhost.exe to launch PowerShell, which executes our one-liner, finds the hidden command in the cache, and runs it with invoke expression. Boom, just like that, the command executes and the calculator opens, and the victim has no idea that the harmless file path is just a PowerShell comment at the end of the script that abuses white spaces and doesn't get executed. This is cache smuggling in action. This is what some threat actors are actively doing. So how do you defend against this? You can't stop browsers from caching images. That's just how the web works. The real move is to watch the cache, not clear it. A small watchdog script can monitor your browser cache and flag anomalies. Files that don't match their normal headers, images with extra data after the end marker, or one that seems way too large for their size. When it finds something suspicious, it can log, quarantine, or re-encode it automatically. If you manage a website, take the same approach on the upload side. Sanitize and re-encode images so attackers can't sneak in hidden data. Now to something cool. We have two active giveaways. One again for the trip to DEF CON next year, where I'll be giving someone $2,000 to go towards their trip. And we once again need to thank ThreatLocker for making that possible. But for our monthly giveaway, thanks to our new sponsor, Covenant Cyber, we are raffling off three Hack5 gift cards on Halloween. Covenant Cyber is a small dedicated team of offensive security specialists based out of Australia. Their entire belief is in their name. Covenant is a promise. They promise to be a true partner to their clients, testing their defenses from an attacker's perspective to give them genuine peace of mind. Beyond their work, they're passionate about giving back and strengthening the entire security community. When it comes to cyber, we're all in this together. If you win, we all win. And I just want to emphasize how appreciative I am that they're sponsoring this giveaway and allowing me to give back to you guys. Remember, I am Jacoby. My crime is that of curiosity. Yeah, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. See you on the desktop.